None of you are here, but I thought I should record this class anyway because a lot of classes we have missed. So, in our last class, we have calculated the number of ways we can distribute n number of particles in k number of boxes or compartments box number one two three up to k minus one and k this is actually in thermodynamics this is equivalent to or statistical mechanics sorry we have k number of energy levels so e1 e2 e3 dot dot, dot e k minus 1 and e k those are the available energy levels and we are going to assign uh, n number of particles to them so how many of them will have the energy E1? How many of them will have energy T E2 and so on? Let's say N, num N1 number of them have energy E1, N2 number of them have energy E2, and N3 and so on, and K minus one, and NK number of particles, gas particles have energy EK. For that, we found the formula of distributing so this is equivalent to distributing n number of particles into k number of compartments where the first compartment gets n1 number of particles second gets n2 third gets n3 and k minus 1 and nk so the boxes are like energy levels and it's a problem of distributing n number of balls in k number of boxes and we found that the number of ways we can do that is just the product of combinations and the result was the result was omega equal to n factorial over n1 factorial 1 factor 1 over n2 factorial 2 over n3 factorial dot 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 in, uh, sorry 1 over n k minus 1 factorial 1 over n k factorial now imagine that the energy levels have some degeneracy so for example in in quantum mechanics in hydrogen atom an energy level corresponds to a quantum number n but that can have angular quantum number L and magnetic quantum number M. Corresponding to L and M, because the energy is only proportional, only a function of N, 1 over N squared, right? Proportional to some 13.6 in case of hydrogen by N squared. So different L values correspond to the same energy. So those levels that have the same energy values, they're called degeneracy. So certain energy level E1 can have a degeneracy of G1. Certain EI can have a degeneracy of GI. That many, uh, you know, divisions that correspond to the same energy value. In our box case, we can imagine that to be like cells inside the boxes that are equivalent. So the first box have G1 cells, second has G2 cells and so on. The kth box has GK cells. And we found that now it is a problem of assigning for the ith box, let's say this is the ith box, has GI compartments so you need to assign ni gas particles to those compartments and they're all equivalent you can assign all ni into the first or all si ni into the second it's the same case 
because they are going to have the energy Ni times Ei anyway. If you put them all here or if you divide them, distribute them in different levels, the total will always be Ni Ei will be the energy. So we don't differentiate. What that means is out of Ni, if you take the first one, first particle, you can put it here or here or here or here anyway in GI possible ways. For the second, again it's GI possible ways. For the NIF particle, again GI possible ways. So the total number of ways you can distribute NI among the GI degenerate levels is GI multiplied NI times and that is GI to the power NI. So if that is so, so every level will get a factor. So this one will get G1 to the power N1. This one will get G2 to the power N2. This get G3 to the power N3 and so on. And G, uh, uh, NK, G K minus 1 to the power NK minus 1. And this gets GK to the power NK. So our total number of ways we can distribute n particles among these k boxes and each one of them has their own cells. That number becomes, this, this thing becomes n factorial product function i equal to 1 to k g i to the power n i n i factorial. That is it. So, coming back to our assigning n number of particles to the uh, this k number of energy levels with each one having some degeneracy, this would be the number of ways we can do that. And that means this is the number of microstates this, that corresponds to this macro state given by n total energy e equal to sum over n i e i right because n i sum of n i i equal to 1 to k would be the number of particles each one multiplied by their energy level that will be total energy Oh, by the way, n of course is sum of n i, i equal to 1 to k. So this, and of course a fixed volume. So this is your macro state given by n e v. It can have these many micro states because that many ways you can distribute them keeping these things fixed or constant. Now we are going to ask what is the condition that we will be in equilibrium? What is that microstate that will correspond to equilibrium? Once again, like you know, that we have to maximize the total number of microstates because Equilibrium is the most probable state and the most probable state is the one that corresponds to maximum number of possible microstates and therefore we have to maximize this thing with respect to of course these ni variables because these are uh, your variables so in the first box you could put one particle or two particle or ten particle or no particle so these ni's in the ith box easier variable so you will you will change that slowly and see when this thing becomes maximum well you could maximize omega and that will give you the maximum value of omega but an easier way would be just to maximize log of omega so you're maximizing del omega over del n i equal to zero or simply let's say variation of omega equal to zero that will be equilibrium that will give you equilibrium condition for the particular um, ni or you could also 
differentiate d of tau and omega at what equal to zero. That will also give you the same condition because, you know, omega might increase in a certain way. Log omega also increase slowly, but it does. So maximizing this is good in, and, and getting the value of ni for which this is maximum is also equivalent to maximizing this thing. So we rather maximize log of omega. And you know why we do that. Because S equal to K B L N omega, you know that, right? So we are actually maximizing the entropy. And maximum, maximum entropy state is the desirable state where the system would like to go. And that is equilibrium. So your equilibrium state is the most probable state and has the maximum. This gives you the most probable and this gives you the maximum entropy. They're equivalent through this relation. Okay, so let's take log of this thing. Log of omega, so product, so log of n factorial plus all these products will become sums. So this will become as product function will become a summation function, right? G1 over N1 into G2 over N3 and, and so on. So they will become sum. So product becomes sum. And the log of GI to the power NI by, uh, divided by NI factorial or log of something divided by something is nothing but log of this thing minus log of that thing again and well this is in the power so you can bring it down here so n i so that's it that's more like more like it okay so if i now take derivative with respect to n i uh del l n omega over del n i okay so of course this thing derivative will be zero because n is total number particle and is constant so here we will have del del n i of first this term so i equal to one to k n i l n g i minus again uh, mm, so, ln ni factorial del del ni. We will later equate that to zero because the equilibrium condition is uh, derivative of this thing is equal to zero, maximum condition. Now, so del ln omega of del ni equal to, first of all, this is not ni dependent so obviously this stays on the left side and the derivative of ni is just one so done here we will have i equal to one to k del del ni of ln of ni factorial there's a formula called the Stirling's approximation. Stirling's approximation that tells us that the log of some number, let's call this m factorial, becomes m log of m minus m when m is a large number m is large much much greater than one a huge number millions billions and that's what it is right in thermodynamics we're talking about at least 10 to the power 23 number of particles so huge number these ni's so if i apply ni m by ni factorial then that thing becomes n i l n n i minus n i and we can use this sterling's approximation here in this formula but before that let's take the derivative here directly so del del n i 
of ln ni factorial, then would just become uh, derivative of ni, that remains plus ni, then derivative of ln i, which is 1 over ni, and derivative of ni, of course, is 1. Uh, so this cancels out. So it's just ln and i. Yeah. So this becomes then i equal to 1 to k ln gi minus i equal to 1 to k. So let's just take the summation outside. Uh, just ln and i. And I, that's it. Now, let's just combine them and write I equal to 1 to K log of GI over NI, right? Or minus log of NI over GI. Same thing. So that is our ln omega by del n i and the equilibrium condition is that this thing must be zero because this would be the condition for a maxima for the maximum value of omega that will be your condition so this gets to zero so the particular value of n i for which we have an equilibrium will be given by then this condition um, yeah, what's the point? There is zero, so let's just forget about the minus, and then so i equal to one to k ln and i over g i equal to zero. Let's save this equation as equation number one. Okay, two more conditions we have. What are they? N equal to sum of N i. Let's call that. Okay, before that. Let's take a derivative of this. D n. That will be, I equal to 1 to k, D n i. And obviously that is equal to zero because the total number of particles is constant. So dn equal to zero. That means this equal to zero. Let's call this equation number two. Right. Now we have two equations. Another equation we have. The total energy is constant. Total energy is given by sum of ni particles with energy ei and i equal to 1 to k so n1 particles in e1 box have n1 type e1 n1 times e1 energy in the next n2 times e2 and so on totally they will sum up to the total energy e now we can take a very energy is constant and therefore it will become dni times ei. These energy levels are also fixed constants and therefore we don't take derivative on epsilon on ei. Okay, so just this. So let's finally write it down. I equal to 1 to k uh, epsilon i dni equal to 0. That we call number 3. So let me write them down in a list, in a nice list. So the first one we have i equal to 1 to k um, ln ni over gi equal to 0, 1. Then we have i equal to 1 to k dni equal to 0, 2. Then we have i equal to 1 to k epsilon i dn i equal to 0, 3. So we have three equations now. 
So when you have three things equal to zero, you can multiply, eight, multiply each zero by arbitrary number and add them. Let's do that. Let's multiply this by gamma, uh, this by alpha, and this by beta, and, and see. Let's, let's see what happens. So gamma times equation number one. And let's, let's call this minus alpha and minus beta. I mean arbitrary right so it's up to me whatever I take I can take minus alpha because alpha is just a constant variable you can multiply this by plus alpha also but later maybe when you calculate its value using a condition that might come up to be uh, negative so just to be you know conventional and simpler so that we from the beginning we just take this to be minus alpha so minus alpha times equation number two minus beta times equation number three and that obviously is equal to zero because each one of them are zeros these are called Lagrange multipliers you know probably from your classical mechanics or mathematics now this equal to zero, so we can divide everything by gamma, right? Considering that gamma is not equal to zero, otherwise we'll be in trouble. Um, in that case, this alpha over gamma, we can define this as alpha prime. Beta over gamma, we can define that, that as beta prime. And so we can just write this one equal to alpha prime two, plus beta prime 3. What are 1, 2 and 3? 1 is this thing, 2 is this thing, 3 is this thing. So 1. 1 is sum of ln. Oh, just one moment. Let's keep them in one side, okay? We don't need to take them in the other side. So let's just keep them like this. So 1 is i equal to 1 to k. Let's take this summation common outside. We have ln ni over gi, then minus alpha prime equation number two. So what is that? Um, dni. Oh, wait. Wait. Here we will have a factor of dni. I'll come to that. I'll clear it in a moment. For now, just assume we have DNI here. And here for beta prime and 3, so epsilon i DNI. This thing equal to 0. Okay. So we can then write this summation i equal to 1 to k DNI common. L N N I over G I minus uh, alpha prime minus beta prime epsilon I equal to zero. So look at this thing. And for any arbitrary variation, this thing is zero. So what does that mean? This means DN1, right? dn1 so this if i expand so this thing is let's say some whatever mm, let's call that coefficient c of ni right let's call that that so this is like dni cni or some just ci let's say ci equal to zero i equal to one to k so this means dn1 c1 plus dn2 c2 plus blah 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 dnk ck equal to zero. We can choose, we can vary this dn1, dn2, dnk independently. Okay? We can vary dn1 without changing dn2. We can ch change dnk without changing any other. We can change that independently and it's still equal to zero. What, that, what, what does that mean? That means this coefficient must be zero. 
otherwise it's not possible anything you choose this not this coefficient these coefficients must be zero independently otherwise it's not possible we can choose any value and if there was a balance total was zero i can change this one independently and it will be not zero anymore so only when these things are independent and it's still zero of course then those coefficients must be zero what that what that means is this ci has to be equal to zero independently so that ci equal to zero means this thing equal to zero which means ln of ni over gi minus alpha prime minus beta prime epsilon i equal to zero what that means is uh, this goes on the other side and then take ln okay let me write down gi to alpha prime plus beta prime ei then I could take an i over g i and that becomes exponential to the power alpha prime plus beta prime epsilon i and then means n i equal to g i e to the power alpha prime plus beta prime e i so we have found the equilibrium condition by applying the variation and the constraints that the total number of particles don't change and the total energy doesn't change and um, that gives you this condition so if n i satisfies this particular distribution among the boxes then you will have an equilibrium state now, of course, we don't know the exact value of these GIs, we don't know the values of alpha, we don't know the value of beta. That we will calculate using some conditions. One condition will be if we sum over ni, of course, it has to be equal to total number n. And that will give us the value of g or n a condition between among them. Anyway, we will come to those things. But remember, I said that here, we need a DNI equal to zero. And that is because the equilibrium distribution condition, equilibrium distribution condition, let's say. Yeah, so. Your omega was like uh, summation i equal to 1 to k um, n factorial uh, uh, ln omega was uh, I think like this uh, so n i ln g i minus uh, I think it was what was it n i factorial and that we wrote as n i ln n i minus n i so plus n i that was using the starting approximation so what we are going to take is just a variation of this and that's why to 1 to k you will get here ln g i d n i minus here you will get what d n i ln g i minus um, n i then d of this will be 1 over n i d n i and that will be plus d n i so this goes away and so in the end what we will have is 1 to k uh, ln your um, ln g i d n i minus um, what is this It is coming from this one. So DNI ln E, this is not, this is NI. This will be ln NI DNI. That and that equal to zero condition will give you D 
GNI common LN NI over GI. That will be equal to zero. And that, that's why we have this factor that we missed. We directly took del del N, N, I, and that's why the NY, DNY was gone. Let's just take the variation. Okay. So, we obtained the equilibrium distribution condition. For that particular NIs among these boxes or energies, that are distributed according to the function. So, if you follow, for example, if your ith box or ith energy level EI gets Ni number of particles satisfying this functional form, so E1 gets G1 e to the power alpha prime beta E1 number of particles, E2 gets this, then you will have an equilibrium state. That particular state will be equilibrium state. Now the next the next thing that we'll have to, we have to do is find out the value of these functions, these unknown uh, constants. We have to find them and then it will be over. We'll do that in the next class.